Hello and welcome to the Peak Electronics booth. Peak Electronics is one of the leading manufacturers of DC-DC converters with a wide range of more than 20,000 standard types. This video is about selecting a DC-DC converter. In few steps we explain the most important criteria to select the converter optimized on the application needs. When do I use converters with potential separation? In numerous applications, however not in all, a potential separation is required. With potential separation, galvanic isolation, all connections on the input side, primary side, and all connections on the output side, secondary side, are electrically separated. With applications which due to the circuitry allow a common minus connection, a DC-DC converter without potential separation can be used. These choke converters, step-down converters or buck converters have several advantages. They are cost-effective and exhibit a high degree of efficiency. The converters have a relatively low power loss and produce with comparable output power less heat. Peak Electronics offers, among other things, a module PSRS 78XXLF series with a flexibly adjustable output voltage in the range from 1.8 volt DC to 15.5 volt DC. Furthermore, various types of packages with an output current of 500 milliamps or 1000 milliamps in a large number of fixed voltages are available. PSR, PSR1, PSRS and PSRW series. A disadvantage of the choke converter switching regulator is that if defective it itself offers no protection for the connected devices. For example, if the switching regulator is destroyed due to a high input voltage and a short circuit is formed internally between the input and the output, this voltage is applied to the connected devices. This can lead to possible destruction of the board. A remedy can be achieved by inserting a fuse, a melting fuse or PTC fuse or polyfuse in front of the plus input of the switching regulator and in addition by connecting a transient voltage suppression TVS diode between plus output and common minus connection. In doing so, the voltage value of the TVS diode must be higher than the nominal output voltage, however only so high that the connected device can sustain the response voltage of the TVS diode. A typical value, for example, for an output voltage of 5 volts is a 6.8 volt TVS diode. For an output voltage of 12 volts, a 15 volt TVS diode. And for an output voltage of 15 volts, a 20 volt TVS diode. The cathode of the TVS diode is connected to the plus output and the anode of the TVS diode is connected to the common minus connection. With applications requiring a potential separation, it should be borne in mind that the values for electric strength between the primary and secondary circuitry given in the datasheet mostly represent a DC voltage value. A value of 1000 volts DC is equivalent to 707 volts AC. However, this is only valid for an AC voltage with a low frequency such as 50 Hz. With high frequencies which occur particularly with clocked heavy duty power supply systems, for instance in solar technology, the electric strength is significantly reduced. What is more, every DC-DC converter exhibits a capacitance between input, primary side, and output, secondary side. The capacitance is caused by the area of the windings of the transformer built into a DC-DC converter. The transformer acts like a capacitor that reacts to each voltage change between primary and secondary circuitry. Where the frequency of a supplied voltage between primary and secondary is very high, the transformer is correspondingly often recharged and hence a high current is produced between input and output side. The entire amount of energy which is thus recharged is dependent, among other things, on the level of the applied voltage. Furthermore, the capacitance value of the DC-DC converter 
also has an influence. The smaller this value, the less energy that is recharged, because a small capacitance can buffer less energy. For applications where a DC-DC converter is operated in the kilohertz range between two potentials, the coupling capacitance, that is, the capacitance between primary and secondary, should only be a few picofarads. Otherwise, the converter can be destroyed or will no longer function correctly.